Welcome to StarCast from Planet Waves. My name is Eric Francis Coppolino, your host and the author of the Planet Waves Horoscope and host of Planet Waves FM. Today's edition, today's edition of StarCast is for Tuesday, the 11th of January, 2021. Thanks for joining me. This is um, an audio version of much of the same stuff that I've covered in a new edition of Planet Waves TV. I will link to that. That's going to be a, a bit longer than this is and also has the um, benefit of uh, rather blurry visual aids. Uh, that's because I was a little too close to the camera. But here we're in audio and there can be nothing visually blurry because there's nothing visual. Okay, so um, this edition is going to cover several events that occur in kind of a cluster uh, between now and Sunday the 19th, that's eight days. So some of the stuff I'm going to cover again um, in in future editions, but this will be a, a good uh, overview and warm-up. Uh, and it's um, peaking with, or actually, lead, but not quite peaking, but leading to uh, the, the ingress of the sun into Aquarius on Wednesday the 19th of January. So to begin with, uh, I'm recording on Tuesday, and in about three days on the 14th, Mercury stations retrograde in Aquarius. Uh, Mercury's been in Aquarius for a little while, uh, and this uh, retrograde will go back into Capricorn. One of the qualities of all the Mercury retrogrades of 2022 is that they begin in air signs, and they wind up in earth signs. So with uh, Mercury beginning in Aquarius, that's an air sign. Then it's going to retrograde back into Capricorn, an earth sign. And well, what is interesting is, is that both the current Mercury retrograde, well, the forthcoming Mercury retrograde and the current Venus retrograde both involve multiple conjunctions to Pluto. So as we mentioned in recent editions, the Venus retrograde began in a conjunction to Pluto on the 19th, but before it did that, it made a perfect exact conjunction to Pluto on the 11th, station retrograde on the 19th, made a second conjunction to Pluto, this time in retrograde motion. And then it winds up uh, on March 2nd or 3rd with a triple conjunction of Venus, Mars, and Pluto. That is a big weekend. And in a sense, all roads lead to uh, to, to this uh, event to these couple of days. Uh, then, okay, so from where we are, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here and skip out to 2038. Uh, from where we are now, a few days ahead of Mercury stationing retrograde in Aquarius. This is going to challenge conventional beliefs and thinking, and it's a classic know when you don't know kind of thing. And also, hmm, maybe I'm not right about something. Maybe I need to rethink things. So there's a rethinking going on, and the rethinking takes us all the way back to the beginning of Aquarius, past the degree of the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction from way back in late uh, 2020. And then Mercury will re-enter Capricorn, where it was recently, and it will hook around a conjunction to Pluto. So it makes a retrograde conjunction, stations direct, and then makes a direct motion conjunction. So there's a lot of Pluto action. Well, we're going to come up on a little bit more Pluto action with the full moon. So all of this Pluto, including the series of Venus conjunctions, the Venus-Mars conjunction in early March, and the multiple conjunctions of Mercury to Pluto are all about going deeper, and they're all about some kind of evolutionary or transformative energy that has the ability, if you choose to use it, to kind of eliminate certain incorrect ideas and uh, incorrect assessments that uh, that have been brewing around. Now, there's a lot of that going on as well, which we'll get to at the end. Okay, so now the the next event. Oh, the the the. Her, her, her. I'm actually looking at notes today and doing worse than usual. Uh, the Mercury retrograde officially goes from the 14th of uh, January out to the 3rd of February. By the way, if you're interested in where this whole Mercury shadow, Mercury storm thing came from, check out the YouTube video 
on that topic. I'm just going to stick it right on top of the StarCast uh, video, uh, StarCast podcast. This is my last task of the day. I'm really tired. Um, uh, so much time, so little to do. Okay, so next next big Pluto thingamabob is that the full moon takes place on the 17th. That is a Monday. Before there is the full moon, there is an exact sun-Pluto conjunction. I think it's going to be the 15th or the 16th. Then the sun just clears Pluto, and who sweeps in for the full moon but the moon in Cancer. So it's the Cancer full moon, the one and only of the year. And uh, it is also the moon being full in the sign that it rules. This is really interesting uh, and uh, meaningful and and particularly powerful. And the moon will be opposite Pluto. So once again, we have Pluto involvement. In fact, we've named all the personal planets. There's conjunctions of Venus to Pluto, Mercury to Pluto, the sun to Pluto, moon opposite Pluto, and then on March 2nd or 3rd, the triple conjunction of Venus, Mars, and Pluto. That's a lot of Pluto. That's a lot of get serious, get real, go deep, really get where you're going, get where you're coming from, understand things in a deeper way, and ultimately you're responsible for what you think and you're responsible for what you believe. Okay, so uh, the full moon takes place uh, in the very late degrees of the Cancer Capricorn axis, because Pluto is in the very late degrees of the Cancer Capricorn axis. And uh, this also um, is like the last round of things happening with Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is about to, in about a year, go into Aquarius. It's going to be transitioning from Capricorn to Aquarius all through 2023. Uh, and so it'll it'll be dividing its time between two signs. Pluto changes signs Only, rarely. Sometimes it takes 12 years to go through a sign like it did through Scorpio. Sometimes it uh, takes 20 years to go through a sign like it's going to do through Aquarius. And sometimes it takes even longer way out at the far end called the Aphelion when it is in Taurus. It takes like 22, 24 years to go through Taurus. So this is interesting, and it's a property of Pluto that's not really talked about, which is the, the wide variable uh, of time that it can spend in a different in different signs. This is purely about how far it is from the sun at any given any given time. And even with something uh, very close to us, like for example, the moon, uh, the moon has what's called a perigee and an apogee that's similar to perihelion and aphelion. One's close to the sun, one's close to the er- close to the earth. The right perigee is close to the earth, apogee is far from the earth. When the moon's at apogee, it takes noticeably longer to go through a sign. It's called a slow moon. And when it's close, it's called a fast moon. So this business of how far the object is from the sun in the course of its elliptical orbit is one of those interesting things to study and to pay attention to. So uh, where does this leave us? So sun goes into Aquarius. Uh, that's, you know, I think when the sun changes signs, it's usually kind of a breath of fresh air. We've had a month of the sun, you know, by that time, a month of the sun being in the previous sign and a whole new wave of birthdays come up. Um, and, uh, and that happens on the 19th. Now, um, along with, well, the, the sun then joins Saturn in Aquarius and a few other points, including Damocles, which is usually in Aquarius. And what is interesting and exciting about the end of the Mercury retrograde on the the 3rd of uh, February is that when Mercury retrograde ends in Capricorn, the sun is exactly conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. So if you ask me, this is really a get serious moment. I just finished listening to a podcast I think some kind of an NPR podcast that came across Mark Crispin Miller's list. If you're if you're interested in that list, uh, check check for a sign up note on uh, our COVID nineteen news blog uh, about the true nature of uh, the the occult rulership of the world, the cryptocracy, this underlying level, and the 
The reality is that whether you're talking about the student association at your college or university, or whether you're talking about the Skull and Bone Society, whether you're talking about Tammany Hall, this Irish social club that essentially ran the politics in the city and the state of New York for nearly a century, usually there is an overt level of, um, let's say, of uh, political rulership, and there is a covert level of political rulership. There is a hidden level of political rulership. And I'm not sure why I, I brought that up, but I'm reminded to say that this is in part indicated by the ongoing conjunction of Pallas Athene, the planet of law and politics, in its conjunction to Neptune in Pisces. When uh, something is conjunct Neptune, it takes on the properties of Neptune, and we are certainly seeing the government act in a very uh, secretive way at this point. But here is the situation, and this is what I was planning to say to you, and we'll end on this note. Uh, right now, Jupiter is in Pisces. It is moving quickly through Pisces. It's not, uh, it, it is going to blaze through Pisces and go straight into Aries in, in May. So we get this very interesting thing of a clear shot of, uh, of a modestly slow-moving planet through one sign. As it's doing that, it's going to make conjunctions to Nessus and then to um, Neptune, and then finally to another point called Borisisi. Now, I think of these, I mean, they're all interesting, and they haven't happened in a long time, uh, but the most interesting thing of them is that in right around 10 degrees of Pisces, let's see where that is exactly here, there's, a, there's data involved, 12 degrees of Pisces, uh, there is um, a point called Nessus. Nessus is a centaur planet. It's the third centaur. The first one was Chiron. That's 77. The second one was Pholus. That's 92. There was a long gap between the first and second centaurs. Then the third centaur came along straight away in 1993. And then two others were discovered in, in 94 and 95. So by 95, we had five centaurs. But the third one, the one that I'm considering here called Nessus, represents a lot of dark and secretive and cryptic and uh, like it's basically secretive and occultish to have uh, ne Neptune and then Neptune in Pisces adds that uh, you know deep and veiled sense and what's about to happen and is in a sense happening now even though it's 10 degrees away as of this discussion it's going to cover those 10 degrees in less than two months. That's pretty cool. Anyway, Jupiter is in Pisces, and it's about to make a conjunction to Nessus in Pisces. And I think that this is going to be like putting a magnifying glass in front of everything that is veiled, concealed, denied, and a lot of very bad stuff is going to come out. It is already coming out as People admit things. The CEO of Pfizer admitted that their shot doesn't really work. Fauci admitted last week that there are lots of children in the hospital who claim to have COVID when they really had something like a broken leg. And Fa Fauci just coming right out and say this? Is this some weird moment of transparency? Well, I think that the conjunction of Jupiter and Nessus is going to magnify all that Nessus type stuff, which is what Jupiter does. Jupiter's main tendency is to magnify things. And there's all kinds of cryptic secrets hanging out in that Nessus in, uh, in Pisces. And so I think we're going to see lots and lots and lots of stuff that people would generally prefer to ignore. Now, I'm not, um, let's see. I often get a good laugh out of uh, out of QAnon when when they say things like, "And the Queen of England is going to be taken to a jail cell. Where are they going to they take her down to uh, Scotland Yard? Queen of England is going to be arrested and brought into a jail cell, and the President of the United States is going to be dragged from office, kicking and screaming, and dragged to the Hague and the criminal court and all this stuff." No, I don't really think so. But what I do think is that many of the things that are just not quite plainly visible or that are hiding in the wings and various different associations and connection points between people, lots of denied information, is going to increasingly come to light as this conjunction to, uh, of, of Jupiter 
to Nessus perfects around the 2nd or 3rd of March. What is that? What, what days of the week is that? Let's take a look at that again. So January, February, March. I'm in iCal 2, 3. That's Wednesday and Thursday. Ooh, Ash Wednesday. That's uh, that's rather occultish. Anyway, so the, that week, I think really the first week of March is going to be ridiculous with things coming out. And I'm not usually making open predictions, but I'm going to make one here. And this is going to build. So you might not say, oh, well, one huge thing comes out on the 3rd. Hey, it might. But along the way, we're going to see lots more stuff coming out. Let's keep a diary of this. Uh, we will we will be continuing to keep ours at COVID-19 News on Planet Waves. You've been listening to planetwaves.fm. Please buy something from us so we can keep doing this. There's lots of awesome readings to get and lots of options to have. And I even do personal consultations that do not even have to be astrological. I've got uh, several areas of expertise, and I am happy to help wherever I can do so. All right. Thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you again with a new edition on Friday. Bye for now.